All right, here is part two <clears throat> for the Kip Builder. And picks up where I left off from part one. I'm going to get this coil. I'm going to be using this coil. Uh, where are we? Here we go. I'm going to be using this coil. Um, and I'm just going to get it out of the way and away from my PC and everything because this generates one heck of a uh, magnetic pulse. Um, all right. So I put that definitely out of the way. And this plug, I'm going to actually plug it in to the PEMF. So this unit now has got power for the PEM uh, to the coil, or it's connected to the coil. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fan, which you'll you'll have in the back bag uh, of parts, and your fan will also have the screws hanging off of it, so. Um, you don't have to go get any of the hardware. And I'm going to plug this into the only plug on the board that the fan will plug into. So there's not a lot of uh, brain work there, so that's done. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is connect up the 12 volts that the board needs. Now, I told you in the other video, what I did is I made a little adapter and I'm running... 12 volts from a vampire module, a, a wall module. Um, you won't have this because I'm not providing wall modules, so I didn't bother giving you a, an adapter. But you can go get a wall module, and you can make your own adapter. Or you'll have to actually um, connect it to the miniature AC to 12 volt uh, power supply I provided for the kit, which is also in the back. All right. So the only place it can plug into, I'm plugging it into. Uh, red to red, and I'm observing the polarity. It's, uh, it's a groove socket, so you can't plug it in wrong. And we're almost all set to go, except for the AC. Now, I have the AC here. Um, there we go. And this is my special cord just for doing testings. So I'm going to connect the red wire. That has been fused. There's a definitely an inline fuse here to, to what I call the hot lead. Put it that way. And the other wire here is the common, and I've got a black wire from my AC, and I'm going to connect that. I'm going to take the fan and rest it on the heat sinks. Okay, and I want the fan, I don't know if I mentioned it, the fan blows air down on the heat sinks. Okay, that's it. Um, the only thing I have to do now is turn on the power. And when I turn on the power, there's a registration that the unit will go through, and the LED will do a quick blink. So let's see if that happens. I'm going to turn this power switch on. Oops, I saw that quick blink. I hope you did. <laughs> that was a quick blink. Now, you're not going to be able to hear the coil. I'll hear it here because it's a, it's a well-built coil, and it doesn't thump too much unless I put something near it, that, uh, like a piece of metal, and you watch the piece of metal jump around. Um, so I'm going to connect up the scope, and you'll get to see... Uh, You'll get to see the video, uh, the pulses uh, on the oscilloscope. And I'll do that if I can find the probe. There we go. Now, I don't recommend you do this, but if you're a kit builder, you should have enough uh, uh, togetherness to avoid putting your fingers on anything that's hot. Like, don't touch that cap. I mean, that'll bite you, bite you bad. Don't touch the uh, the hot leads. That'll bite you. That'll bite you bad. Don't touch the resistor. That'll bite you. You can touch these. There's no bite. This is all low voltage right here uh, that I'm holding uh, on the rot rotary switches. Uh, they're low voltage. voltage. There's a... Whoops. My fan. I knocked my fan off. Okay. And I'm going to rearrange this. I'm sorry for... I'm going to rearrange this so the switches are... Won't keep knocking the cable on the fans. So now the fan's blowing on the heat sinks, and I do have access to the switches. Okay. Um, 
So to connect my scope, I'm going to plug the uh, the specially special cable I made up um, into my outlet. Yeah, you can actually connect two coils. There's three plugs here. You can connect two coils. Um, the unit will handle it just fine, providing the coils are designed right. And I'm going to connect ground to ground. And connect the probe to the hot lead. And this is a pulse. If I can get it on there. Nothing's touching. Okay. Bring this cable up here. Lay this down. Use this little extra resistor as a All right, nothing is touching. I suggest that you lay this all out on a um, board and tape down things if you're going to do a preliminary test and evaluation. Uh, don't do this. So the rule is do as I tell you, not as I show you. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else I want to do here? Not that I can think of right off the bat. I guess I just want to start demonstrating it. Um, I'm looking for the LED. <laughs> Where's, oh, there it is. There's the LED. Because, and I'm going to aim that towards the camera so you'll be able to see it flash, hopefully. Okay. All right, first thing I want to do is I've got to set the time for, I'm going to set the time for one minute. And I'm going to set the pulse to uh, count to one a second. And... This, when I said the start stop switch, this is the logic start stop switch. It's not the power start stop switch. You will put a power switch in this AC uh, source with the fuse and everything. Uh, so here's that little button, and it's this logic. And if I press it once, you can now see that the uh, LED is flashing. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. And you can see pulses on here. And if I sync on channel one, and spread it out, there you go. That's the pulse going out to the coil. I could show you some other interesting things. And uh, I think I did in one of the videos. Uh, showed you the stepping and the charging of the cap and so forth. Remember, do not touch anything except the switch and the rotaries. Okay, a couple of uh, things to note. Uh, it's a start-stop. So if I press the stop, press the stop, there we go, it stopped. And that's, that's all there is to it. Now, I'm going to dial in a speed. I'm going to the speed button. See the little red dot on top? And I'm going to dial it all the way to the max, position 6. And that's five uh, pulses per second. Watch that little LED pop. You're not going to see the pulses come any faster. It's, it, the scope is just going to show you every time there's a pulse, and it's going to look like there's a pulse. That's all it's going to look like. All right. Press the go button. Can you see that LED? Yeah. So now it's flashing at five seconds, uh, five pulses per second. And it's, uh, it's going out to that coil. Keep that coil away from your computer. Keep that coil away from anything that you want. You're spooky. Uh, I got a spooky right here. Didn't see it, but it's spooky. Keep it away from your electronics. It's generating one heck of an EMP, electromagnetic pulse. Okay. Yeah, just like a nuclear bomb went off someplace. Um, only it's a small version of one, and it's local to your household. And that's it. That's how easy it will be to run this unit. Um, you don't have to have a scope. A scope is a wonderful tool to have so you can see the, uh, so you can see things and help you design and bug and make changes, debug and make changes. Uh, just for explanation, that is about a three and a half millisecond wide pulse. So that, <coughs> oh, by the way, I just stopped because I had the timer set for a minute. So that pulse, let me start it up again. So that pulse, I mean, it just, the transition from 
zero volts to, and if I go on measure, so I'll go measure, acquire, 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 measure. It's telling me that that pulse is uh, got 168 volts peak from the bottom to the very top, and it <laughs> it just drops that uh, charge from the cap into the coil in three milliseconds, and it does that five times a second when it's pulsing five times a second. So I think that covers it. You can always send me an email if there's a, a question. Um, most kit builders know what they're doing, so and the schematics that I have, the documentation is decent. Uh, the schematic is accurate. Uh, the programming uh, code is on the web, but don't go in there. Don't do it. You, you just you don't know what you're doing until uh, you study the circuit and you look at the code. You've got to be a programmer. All right, so it's stopped again. It flashed for a minute, and of course, I can change the time. I can change the time to one minute, two minute, five minute, ten minute. 20 minute and 30 minutes. There's six options. Um, my wife runs it at 20 minutes. I run it at 30 minutes uh, when I'm using it for, uh, for my leg. My wife uses it for her chest and uh, and helps her breathe. She's got COPD. Um, okay, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I hope this video really helps you guys out and gals uh, helps you people out. Okay, thank you very much.